Long time no see. Sonic Riders is my favorite racing game of all time, so I thought I'd talk about it for a bit given I haven't played it in about a decade. I recently started emulating on Dolphin and I knew I had to revisit this title. Anyway, the game features a variety of modes, but first off, the story. There isn't anything particularly captivating here as the plot is pretty generic. Sonic and friends are trying to stop Eggman from insinuating chaos, it's pretty simple. However, you have a few new characters in the cocky speedster Jet the Hulk, the sassy mechanic Wave the Swallow, and the dense powerhouse Storm the Albatross. This trio makes up the Babylon rogues or extreme gear or hoverboard specialists. They serve as the anti-heroes of sort and they're the main force that clashes with Sonic's team. Although they're initially presented as devious, they eventually collaborate with Sonic to stop Eggman once and for all. What's unique about the gameplay is that, well, there are a lot of things you have to account for. Your air meter at the right serves as your fuel and when that reaches zero, you're forced to run on foot. You can press B for a boost attack and drift with R, but you must sparingly use these as they take up a decent chunk of your meter. When you collect a certain amount of rings, you level up which grants you a greater boost and more fuel to work with. Level 2 needs 30 rings and level 3 warrants 60 rings. When you die, you lose all your upgrades and rings, so you gotta be careful! What I admire about this game is rooted in its elegance. I find the concept of riding and performing tricks on a hoverboard to be super dope and it just never grows mundane for me. Sonic Riders is unique in that the level layout is generally balanced between the three types of characters you can choose from. Speed, Fly, and Power. The varied level layouts and shortcuts call for you to experiment with different characters and snag the fastest time. I typically stick with speed characters because grinding on rails is awesome, but I've played the others as well, although not as much. Honestly, I just love the emphasis on speed, the satisfaction that comes from remembering level layouts, and breezing through stages without ever slowing down. However, in an objective sense, Sonic Rider has glaring flaws. Firstly, it does not teach you the mechanics. The most vital element of a racing game is its gameplay and it's jarring for a newer player to struggle so much without even a hint or indication of how to operate. Secondly, the story is very generic. It's predictable and there isn't really anything memorable to document as the story boils down to stop Eggman. Oh wait! Eggman screws up and now we have to defeat an external force. Albeit average, I still appreciate the fact that they threw in a few interactions between these characters as the cutscenes were pretty funny because of the bad voice acting. It's not something I can explain, you just have to listen to it for yourself. Remember the teachings of our ancestors! Be careful what you ask for, ultimately you'll only get three true wishes. Oh, be quiet! Why'd you burst in here anyway? Lastly, although I'm a big fan of a lot of the levels, some of them are admittedly poorly designed. Night Chase is just filled to the brim with bullshit, with the trains and cars spontaneously appearing to screw you up, and both Egg Factory and Ice Factory have too many drifting segments placed in undesirable areas that don't appeal to me at all. Overall, Sonic Riders has enough elements to diversify itself from other games through its implementation of hoverboards and the focus on resource management in order to maintain speed. Levels cater to each of the three archetypes of speed, fly, and power, offering exclusive shortcuts based on the character you're playing. There's a lot of things to do in its story, mission mode, tag mode, survival mode, and there's a wide selection of gear to purchase with the rings you've accrued. There are so many types of gear with distinctive stats and skills that you can test out to your liking. You may struggle a bit as you're learning given the game doesn't teach you how to play, but that's something you'll have to resolve through trial and error as I did. The story is mediocre at best and the voice acting is subpar, but the gameplay in itself is the most important quality of a title of the racer genre. I grew up with this game and quite frankly, despite its flaws, I still think it's a solid entry to the Sonic franchise. You have my dearest gratitude for sticking here until the end and with that being said, enjoy your day, bye!